If we look at scholarly publication, the crucial thing is free scholarly publication, free as in freedom. The people who get the articles must be free to redistribute them. And I was convinced by Michael Eisen, founder of the Public Library of Science, just redistribution is not enough. People have got to be free to do things to those articles, to change them, to crunch articles together. And therefore, he convinced me what we need is not merely redistributable scientific publication. We need free libre scientific publication. Now, people have campaigned for that before, but they chose a misleading name, quote, open access, unquote. If you look at the Budapest Initiative for Open Access, you'll see that it had two points. One was that the original publication site should allow anybody to download a copy, and second, that the copy would allow people to redistribute and do various other things. But by using the name open access, they focused on the first point, which made it easy to forget about the second point. And that's what tended to happen. Some policies and laws that were issued under the name open access only demanded the first point. Well, the second point is actually the most important one because just having access doesn't give people freedom to do anything at all with the articles once they get a copy. But the contrary does work. If everybody's free to redistribute the articles at least, then you can expect various libraries to organize mirror sites and everyone will have access. So actually of these two points, the second one is the most powerful one and that's exactly what the term open access shoves aside and ignores and what tends to get lost. So we need to campaign for free libre scientific publication and not merely for anything about access. The other issue is libraries and the thing that a li most libraries are mainly full of, which is books of all kinds. They're not just scholarly books. Well, the big problem with books and freedom is that ebooks take it away. Let's look at a typical example, the Amazon Swindle, which is an e-reader that swindles readers out of the traditional freedoms that they have enjoyed under copyright law for hundreds of years. For instance, there's the freedom to acquire a book anonymously by paying cash. And by the way, that's the only way I buy books. I will not identify myself to a bookstore in any fashion if the bookstore also knows what, will record what books I'm buying. Because they have no right to such information and it's intolerable to establish a practice where there's a list that says all the books that each person has read. But that's exactly what Amazon does with the swindle because there's no way to buy books for the swindle with cash from Amazon. So Amazon requires the users to identify themselves and thus maintains a list of all the books each user has read. Then there's the freedom to give a book to someone else after you read it or sell it to someone else, perhaps to a used bookstore, a place that I, the kind of place I spend a lot of time or to lend it to various friends. Well, this is abolished for the swindle through malicious functionality in the software, which we call digital handcuffs. It's designed to be impossible to do this. And second, Amazon says that the users can't do this because they don't own any books. Amazon has declared war on private property. A system in which every book belongs to Amazon, that's not a system of private property. Private property means you can buy a book and then you own it. Well, Amazon requires users to send, to sign 
end user license agreements saying that they don't own it. They only have a license to read the book under the conditions that Amazon has imposed. Well, this is an injustice, but then there's the freedom to keep the book as long as you wish, which Amazon abolishes through a back door. A backdoor is another kind of malicious functionality in software that receives commands remotely from Amazon. We don't know all the things that that backdoor can do, but we know one thing by observation. It can be used to remotely delete books. We know this because in 2009, Amazon remotely deleted thousands of copies of a book. And these were copies that until that very day were authorized copies. The users had obtained them from Amazon in the usual approved fashion. And then Amazon deleted them all, which was an Orwellian act. And the book was 1984 by George Orwell, which demonstrates what an Orwellian product the swindle is. Of course, 1984 presented a totalitarian state whose crimes began with destroying the books it didn't like. Uh, so <clears throat> the official name of that product is the Kindle, which means to start a fire, which I suppose is a suggestion of the real purpose of that product, to remotely burn our books. So you shouldn't use these. And I picked this one example because I know the most about it, but the other commercial ebook stores are unjust in at least some of those ways, and some of them are actually worse. 